Today is the hand of God. Today is the hand of God. Today is the hand of God upon my life, upon my life. Today, today is the hand of God upon my life. Hallelujah. Today is the hand of God. Today. see the Lord. Today I will see the Lord. Today I will see the Lord upon my life, upon my mind. Today, today I will see the Lord. Today I will see the Lord. Today we want to see you. For the Bible says, whenever two or three will get up by your name, you'll be among them. Father, we are more than two. We are more than three. Gather to this place in your name. Please, let your presence, let your glory, your palpable, your tangible, your active presence be manifested in our midst in the name of Jesus. Father, speak to us. Speak to our problems. Speak to our issues. Speak to whatever have been tormenting our life. Change us and transform us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say amen. Praise the living Jesus. Let's give him a round of applause. A good one. Amen. Praise God. You may have a seat for a minute. Can you please help me greet the brother and the sister who's just next to you? Tell him and tell her you are welcome in God's presence. Welcome. Welcome. You are welcome in God's presence. You are welcome in God's presence. He is with us. The Lord is with us just as uh, he promised that I am with you every day. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Praise God. My message this morning is titled, Deadly Visitors or Deadly Guests. Now, we will understand why I say they are deadly. Deadly does not mean necessarily that uh, it gives you death now, but it just means that it activates the process of death in your life, or it has the ability to activate the process of death in your life. Now, I believe once you, at least once, you have received a visitor. You have been visited by somebody. I believe all of us here, once we have been visited. You know, I have my last one who's 10 years. He also got visitors. You know, once he had visitors, people who came to visit him. They just came for him. So we all one day have visitors. And those visitors were of two kind. They are visitors who come to you because you have invited them. And when you receive visitors who are invited, you promote them not to remain visitors, they become guests. You call them guests. Because you have invited them, and usually you make provision for them. You prepare to receive them. Those are visitors. Those are guests. But there are also some other people who come to your life without you inviting them. You just hear somebody knocking at the door, and then you open, and then here is somebody who's there. So now I was passing by, I thought of you, and then I came to visit you. Now that one, sometimes you may be happy to see the person, or some other time you may not be happy because he is not a guest. 
You were not expecting the person. You know, usually when you go somewhere and then somebody tells you that, oh, I was not expecting you, you must understand that you are not really very much welcome. Because if a person is surprised to see you and still happy to see you, you say, oh, you're welcome. When he goes, that, mm, I was not expecting you, it means that somewhere, somehow, he really doesn't need you to take long there. So a guest is someone who is specially invited. Somebody that you invite in your life or in your house or in your wherever you are. But a visitor is somebody who surprises you and say, I came to visit you. Now, every guest is a visitor, but every visitor is not, not always a guest. He's not always welcome to where you are. Now, this is what you need to understand about the visitor or the guest. All guests or visitors, they are, they are just there for a few moments, few days or few hours. They are not there to remain forever. This is the first thing. When I call somebody a guest or a visitor, I know he is not there forever. He will leave. And the second thing you need to understand about the visitor, a visitor or visitors can be carrier of good news or can be carrier of bad news. They can be carrier of life or they can be carrier of death. They can be carrier of happiness or they can be carrier of problems. That's why you must be careful when you, you receive somebody in your house. When you receive somebody in your midst. Because you never know which kind of visitor is that person. The third thing you need to um, you need to keep in mind about the visitor. The visitor, visitor, when they come to you, and especially when they are bringing bad things, when they are bringing bad things, those bad things can bring death. Hence, we are speaking about deadly visitors. So today, we are not speaking about the good visitors. Those who are bringing us blessing, joy, peace, promotion, progress. But we are speaking about deadly visitors. Those who have the potential of bringing death. Visitors can bring you death. Visitors can disrupt your couple. Visitors can disrupt your family. You just receive them one. But when they came and what they say and the way they behaved, it can bring a complete, complete disruption in your house. There are families, there are couples who received somebody saying that this is uh, my, 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 my uh, husband's uncle or this is my, my uh, 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 um, wife's, I don't know, cousin. But since that person came, since they received that visitor, he brought, she brought problems in their marriage. Problem in their family. I don't know if you ever witnessed things like that. People were so much in peace until somebody comes. Until they receive a visit of somebody. And see, until sometimes they, they, they welcome that person themselves. They invite that person themselves. Beloved, it is not because you are invited, because the visitor is your guest, that he will always be a good guest. I've heard people saying that I regret of inviting this person to my house. I regret of, uh, you know, welcoming this person in my house. At the beginning, you thought that that person is going to be a good person. Or that visit is going to be a good visit that gives you joy and happiness. But only to find out at the end of the day that they, what he was carrying was not life, but was carrying death. This is why it is important for you and me to be careful to discern whoever we are inviting in our house, in our lives, in our circle, to make sure that is a carrier of good things. But if it's a carrier of bad things, unfortunately those bad things can be death. Now, let me quickly tell you that death has three levels. Death has three level, levels. Oh, there are three kinds of death. The first kind of death, it is called a physical death. This is the death of this body. Where you leave the body, and when the body cannot leave, you need to go and throw it somewhere. The second kind of death, you can still be in your body. But that second kind of death is 
a spiritual death. The spiritual death is the separation between a man and God. It is when a person can no longer have an encounter or can no longer have a fellowship with God. When a person does no longer have a fellowship with God, he is dead even if he's alive. And there are many people who are dead today, although living in their bodies. Now, the third kind of death, this is a dangerous one. Because you can't recover from it. The last kind of death is what we call an eternal death. An eternal death is when the, the physical death comes and finds you in a spiritual death. Am I making sense to somebody? When the, the physical death comes and finds you in the physical death, it produces what you call a eternal death. Now, the eternal death is an eternal separation of a dead person physically with God. When you are in eternal death, there is no way for you to change. This is called the second death. When you get into that, you are finished. Make sure as you are still alive in your body, you shall not be in spiritual death. You be separated from God. Because if the physical death come and find you separated with God, you enter in an eternal death. Now, these visitors I'm going to speak about today, they are able to create the two first death. They are able to create in you a physical death, but they can also create in you a spiritual death. Now imagine, we say that if the, the physical death come and find you in a spiritual death, you are lost. It creates automatically an eternal death. When you are dead eternally, the prayer of the pastors, the prayer of the priest, cannot change anything for you any longer. We thought, we were, we were taught before that if you die, and uh, if a uh, check that you need 50 good and 50 bad, God can still put you in a place of purgatory. And in the purgatory, after purging your pain, he can promote you to heaven. Beloved, this is a teaching from the pit of hell. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that it is reserved for men to die once. After death comes judgment. Don't get into the trap of the devil. Thinking that a, spirit, a physical death can find me in the spiritual death, it's okay. They will pray for me. They will pray for my coffin or they will pray for my cups and something will happen beloved after death only one thing is left it is the judgment now the good thing the bible says that those who are in jesus have passed from death to life from condemnation to justification so if you are in christ jesus you will never see death jesus said that those who are in me will never see death if you are here, you are a child of God. You will never see death. Because you are alive and you are alive eternally. Hallelujah. I'm speaking about those visitors. Those visitors, beloved, as we're going to see, they are visiting us. Sometimes because we call them as our guest. But sometimes they are coming unannounced. They will visit us. It is up to us to know how to detect them to see that this is a deadly visit. I have to handle him well. Otherwise, he will send me the venom. A serpent is walking around. And the serpent has a venom. And that venom, one you, can give you death. You may play with the serpent. Just make sure that his venom does not enter your blood. Because the moment the venom of the serpent, the moment the venom of these visitors enters you, it creates death. Or it has the potential to create death. And I can tell you, you'll see today, many have died from the bite of these visitors. Many have died already. Even they are walking still in their physical body, but inside they are dead. Because they did not handle well one of these visitors. Because, beloved, these visitors so many. But how we're not going to speak about all of them today. 
Today, I'm going to speak about three preeminent of death. Those who are mostly creating problems and are so much familiar with us. We are going to speak about them. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to open your, your ears and to listen to me carefully. Because I want to give you the tips for you to identify them. And once you identify them, you are going to handle them. You see, when you know that this serpent is venomous, I will handle this serpent differently than another serpent who is not venomous. I will handle it differently. But when you know that this serpent has a power to bite me and to kill me, I will handle that serpent differently. I cannot just go touch that serpent. I will use. Hallelujah. The problem is, we, because we don't know those vitals, when they come to us, we handle them anyhow. And because we handle them anyhow, this is the reason why they are killing us. Now, mind you, our first visitor, he is called hunger. Hunger, hunger. Hunger, starvation, or crave. You know when you are craving food? Or when you're having, you know, you are starving something. You know, that hunger, that hunger, which is, uh, which is the feeling of discomfort or weaknesses caused by lack of food. You know, couple of the desire to eat. Now you're going to ask me, Pastor, hunger? H yes, hunger is a visitor. You are not always hungry. Are you hungry all the time? No. He, hunger come to visit you. He come to visit you and you realize, hey, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Sometimes hunger comes naturally without us expecting it. You can be somewhere, you are busy with your things, you are thinking about something, and then ish, you feel like, oh, I'm hungry now. I'm hungry. He came and announced. He just knocked at the door and tell you that I'm here. My name is hunger. I'm, you must be hungry and you need food. You must satisfy me. Now it is up to you to see how you are going to satisfy this hunger. Now, hunger can also be invited. Now, when I say hunger, take it as any form of lack. Take it as any form of difficulties or any form of challenge. Challenges, we are not always challenged. But challenge can come as a visitor. We are not always in difficulties. But difficulties can come as visitor. Now, the problem is sometimes we are the one who are inviting hunger, inviting difficulties, inviting challenges in our own life. As I told you, a visitor can come and announce, and the visitor can come being invited, now become a guest. I can tell you, there are many people who have received hunger in their life as a guest. Now ask me, Pastor, what are you talking about? Don't worry, I'm going to break it down. There are people who have invited themselves hunger in their life. Now, how do you invite hunger in your life? You invite hunger in your life when you eat the flesh and the seed. When you eat the flesh and the seed, you must just know you are setting up hunger ahead of you. Let me say it again. When you are eating the flesh, and you are eating the seed, you are just setting up a hunger ahead of you. You are just setting up difficulties ahead of you. People are saying that, or the Bible says, you shall not mock God. Whatever you sow, you will reap it. We go angry. We create difficulties for ourselves sometimes because of kind of things we are sowing. Because we don't sow the seed, we confuse the seed and the flesh. In everything God gives you, you must understand, no matter how small it is, for you to perpetrate it, you need to remove the seed and put the seed under the ground. Don't just keep the seed. Many Christians today, we are in trouble because we don't know that in whatever God gave us, he make it a principle of life. And this principle does not matter you being a Christian or you being a pagan. You know, recently I was studying Acts chapter 10. I was studying what happened to Cornelius. Then I realized that Cornelius was a pagan. Although 
he was giving the offering, he was doing whatever he was doing, he was still a pagan. Should he die in that condition, he could have gone to hell. But what happened? The Bible says that an angel was sent specifically from heaven to a pagan. He went to a pagan. A, an angel of God, a holy angel, went to a dirty man. He went there and he said, God has sent me. First to tell you that you will, you will die in your sin, you are a pagan. But because of your offering, the offering has created a memorial before God. Do you know that even pagans are creating memorial before God? By their gift and by their giving, they are creating a memorial. You think that giving, what should I give? Giving creates a memorial before God. The Bible says that uh, God sent an, an angel to Cornelius. He told Cornelius that your offering has created a memorial. Because it's created a memorial, God has sent me. So that you can call a man called Peter. To come and teach you the word of God. So that you may receive life. Because even though your offering has created a memorial, it cannot bring life. You still need to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. But the bottom line of what I'm trying to say, that gift creates a memorial before God. A memorial so that God may remember. What is the role of a memorial? To remember. The role of a memorial is to remember. Offering makes God to remember you. Nobody shall lie to you and tell you that Jesus paid everything, it is okay. Yes, Apostle James said, show me your faith without work. I shall show you my faith with my work. By my work. Faith without work is dead. Let me say it again. Faith without work, it is dead. People are always waiting to have millions to start giving. Jesus called on to that. He said, he who is faithful in the little one will be faithful in the bigger one. Don't think that you'll be faithful and be earning $1,000 uh, dollars or one of be earning 100,000. If when you are earning 5,000 rand, you are unable to understand that there is a seed in the 5,000 rand for me to put it back in the, in the, the ground for it to produce more 5,000 rand, when you'll be earning 100,000, you're not going to have that power. It's going to be even more painful for you because you'll go like, ah, uh, 5,000, that's only 500. But now it's 100,000, it is 10,000. Of offering, I mean of, of tithe. No, no, come on, come on. And then you start going and bring us those teaching, those false teaching. No, tithe is not in the New Testament. You see, when people go on those things, it is because their heart is already corrupted. We don't give God because he asks us to give. We give God because we love him. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he, he gave. There is no love without giving. You young ladies, that guy always come to you. I love you, I love you. Tell him what is the proof of your love. Hallelujah. So you need to understand, beloved, that you can invite hunger in your life. You can invite problem in your life when you are eating the seed. You will go hungry. You will go hungry when you don't know how to create a memorial before God. People are asking me, Pastor, pray for me for this financial hardship. You know, I prayed sometime for financial hardship. God told me the only one way to have a breakthrough in financial hardship is to sow seed. You have to sow. You have to give. You have to start giving the little one that you have. Many people only speak about giving. Their eyes are becoming red and their mind troubled because you don't love. If you love, you will give. The, the first thing you'll give, Jesus said, Romans chapter 12, offer your life, your body as a living sacrifice. The problem is because you're unable to offer, the most important thing you have is yourself. If you are able to offer yourself, you're able to offer everything with you. This is what the Bible says. If God, in the book of Romans, the Bible says, if God, Give, gave us his only one son, Jesus. How can he not give us everything? Because he gave the most important. So the secondary one, he can give it easily. Your marriage is a secondary to God. He already gives you the principle. Your breakthrough is secondary to God. He always gives you the principle. So if he gave you the principle, he can easily give you the secondary. 
What God could hesitate to give you, it was his son. But he did not hesitate. He released the son. So everything that left, he can give it to you easily. Hallelujah. So we, we invite hunger in our life when we eat the seed. We invite problem in our life when we sow bad things. When we sow lies. When we sow uh, um, all those bad things that we know. Let me not get into the details. Hallelujah. Now, every time hunger comes, the devil will always come. To suggest to you quick way to satisfy your hunger. Let me say it again. Every time hunger comes, the devil will always be there. To suggest to you easy ways to satisfy your hunger. Understand when hunger enters your life. When you feel hungry, you must understand this hunger has the potential to bring death in my life. If I don't handle him well, I might accept corrupt ways for me to find the means to satisfy hunger how many people are outside there are in situations that they wouldn't like to be but they are there because of hunger because they are hungry one of my friends told me they went to do evangelism to the prostitute and then they brought them to church they start asking them why are you prostituting and one of them say I am in this condition because I have two children. As usual, fathers run away. If you are here, you are a father and you know that you gave babies in Limpopo, babies in Cape Town, babies in Mafikeng, uh, uh, and then you abandon them, you are having a problem with God. You are running away from your responsibilities. If you recognize them as your children, this is a bracket, you must make sure you go to them and take care of them. In this country, it is more often seeing that our ladies are left alone with children. And they have to crack themselves to find mean for those children. Whereas those fathers are busy continuing to make other ladies pregnant somewhere. If you are here, you better change your ways. If you left somebody with your pregnancy, go and be responsible of that. Hallelujah. Now I was saying that the devil every time. He comes, he will suggest you. I was telling you about this young lady. She said, I'm having two kids and they don't have fathers. So I have to take care of them, of them myself. And I don't have a job. It's too hard. That's why I find an easy way. You see? An easy way. I have it already on my body. All I have to do is what? Offer it. It's easy. This one doesn't need any training, doesn't need any, any, any qualification. There's no qualification to be a prostitute. The qualification is just to have what is needed there. And what is needed there is just your body. You see, she's there. But she said every time when she's with men, she doesn't feel anything. It is even sometimes disgusting. But because she has to feed her children. You see, why and how hunger can bring death? She's hungry. Because of hunger, she takes easy ways. How many of us, to ensure the safety of our families, we have compromised ourselves in certain things. We have done things. We have gone places. We have done certain things that was not right. But because we were hungry and we wanted to feel that hunger. When I say hungry, it doesn't need necessarily hungry. But it, it, it means need, problems, issues, school fees. Whatever we have as problems, how do we solve those things? Hallelujah. The devil came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. He told Jesus, If you are son of God, tell this stone to become bread. See? And he did not tell him before when. He was Jesus was visited by hunger. The Bible says Jesus was hungry after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. The visit came. The visit called hunger. The visit called need. Problem. Doubt in life you'll have needs. You'll have problems. You'll have issues. That you need money. That you need to be satisfied by money. But just be careful how you get that money. There are ways of getting money which are 
are not godly ways. Those ways bring death. Those ways will separate you with God. Those ways will trouble your life. Those ways will you away from the word of God. Hallelujah. So, Jesus, he was told by the devil, trust this bread, just pray for this bread, uh, for this uh, stone to become bread. Jesus looked at him. He said, mm -mm, this is not the ways of God. The devil is an expert to change things, to transform things, to make them acceptable to you. But understand, hunger can bring death if you handle it well. Sometimes God will allow you to go hungry so that he can teach you to count on him. Sometimes you can be in a, in a situation whereby you only have one meal a day. Don't give up to look for two meals because you want to compromise the ways of God. Don't compromise the ways of God. If God allow you to have one meal a day, keep it meal a day. Say, I am not going to compromise. Jesus answered that it is also written hallelujah beloved in the bible there is a very prominent example of somebody because of hunger sold his birthright we know it all we know the story of jacob and Esau. in the book of genesis chapter 25 34 you can read it yourself this man he was a hunter. After coming from his hunting, he did not find anything. He did not find. So he entered his life. Hunger came to visit him. He was so hungry, he found his brother who has cooked a very nice meal stew that was smelling nice. And he came to him and said, give me a bit of stew. The brother said, if you want my stew, sell me your birthright. And again, I say, I'm hungry, man. Give me the, give me the stew. You can take the birthright. How often have you sold your birthright? Because you wanted to satisfy a need. Because you wanted a new cabello. Because you wanted a new iPhone 16. And the guy say, yeah, you can get a new iPhone 16. Yeah, it is. But come and get this from my room. And you look at i5, i 16. And remember, you can start thinking how you will, uh, you will impress us all in church with the iPhone 16. Show us that iPhone here in church and how we'll be impressed. That is a hunger. A hunger of uh, impressing other people. That is a hunger. A hunger of having new clothes. You said no, people are, are tired to see me with the, new, the, the same clothes. I need new clothes. That is a hunger. That is a hunger of new clothes. But be careful how you're going to satisfy. Don't exchange your birthright. Don't exchange your Christianity. Don't exchange your integrity. Don't exchange your life. Don't exchange your principles. Sometimes we are exchanging our principles with things that can satisfy our needs, can satisfy our hunger. For Esau, he was like, if I don't eat now, I will die. You're not going to die. God can allow you to go hungry. God can allow you to remain with, you see, brothers, I always tell you, I arrived in South Africa, I was only having one suit. That was me. My only cloth is one suit, only one suit, nothing else. One, everything was one. One shoe, one sock, one trouser, one underwear, one belt, one, everything was one, 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 one. I could have compromised. I'm old now, you can see, but when I started there, send me 15 years ago, I was more handsome than this. And I met people, I met ladies with cars, with, doctor, you don't have a car, or can I arrange something? I saw my friend arranging things like that, but I said, I am not going to compromise. I accepted to go and sleep on a mat, on a, we slept with a mat, my wife is a witness, we slept on a mat. But there was a way to do that. Beloved, hunger has the potential to kill you. Hunger, if you don't handle it well, he is a deadly visitor if you don't handle him well. And many other people, as I'm talking here, you are remembering what you exchange because you wanted to satisfy hunger. When a visitor comes to your house, you must tell him, 
This is my house. You go from here to here. You cannot allow hunger to take over your house, to take over your life, to do whatever hunger wants. Tell hunger, hunger, you are in my house now. Yes, you are hunger, it's okay. I'm hungry, it's okay. But remember, you are in my house. In my house, we don't eat, we don't satisfy you after 20 hours. You know, this morning I was telling my wife, hey, I think we should just decide to not eat after 20, after 20 hours anymore. Because after that, I don't know if it's because of age or what, if you eat after 20, you can't sleep at night. Feel the food going up. <laughs> but when I was young, I can eat any time, no problem. I'll sleep, snow, but now it's a problem. No. You see, so anger when it comes, he will ask you, do this, eat this, and eat this, and eat this, and eat this. When you eat all those things, you end up having certain diseases. You see anger, what it does to people? Certain sicknesses that you are having is from the food that you are eating. Because hunger wants to be satisfied. Tell him hunger from now on. I know when you come, you are in my house. I need to handle you. You cannot just do whatever you want as you wish. This is my house. This is how we're going to sort out this problem. Sometimes accept to go two days without eating because you don't want to compromise with that man. Who always come to say, a sister, why are you suffering like this? I can take you out of that suffering. You tell him, but I may, I'm a married woman. He said, but I'm Balthazar. I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I was just kidding. <laughs> Amen. All those women there, it was because of money. He will say, the, yes, money, easy money. You know, our sisters, especially the beautiful sisters, all of you are beautiful anyway in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it is so difficult. You said, I'm married. I said, but I'm not saying that I will take you forever. You'll remain with your husband. But I'm just saying, yes, the, you, this money will even help your husband also. Is that your husband in need? And then you start thinking, Ish, it's only once. You know, Somebody say, don't worry, it's a river. If somebody come and just take one cup from that river, the river is not finished, the river is still there. Because it's not a river, oh. it's not a river. If you do it once, you can open doors to powerful demons that are going to kill you, that are going to trouble your life. There are people today, they cannot intimate with their husband any longer the way they used to because every time the husband comes, that image will come. And he cannot tell the husband, he cannot tell the wife. That image comes all the time. You are dead, you are dying. You can't enjoy it anymore. Why? Because you allowed it once. When the money will come, now you do it and get the money and you bring the money at home. You cannot tell your husband where you got that money. The next thing you're going to lie is my uncle. You see, the, the, my uncle of my auntie of the sister of my father, he is the one who lives in uh, London. He sent me this money. And the poor, ma the poor husband, because they are in, in need, the husband does not even ask, no, just give it that. Ah, God is good. The poor husband, he thinks that it's God who has done it. Where else it is hunger that has brought those kind of things. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. For you to control your hunger. Control your hunger. You know, the devil is an expert of using anger to his advantage. Remember what happened to the people of Israel in the time of Gideon. The Bible says they were, they were hiding themselves in the, in, the, um, in the rocks because they were afraid of the Madanites. They were hiding, but what they do? They will destroy all their field, the food, so that they may go hungry. And it happened also in the time of Elijah. The Bible said they besieged them, and then they were hungry. The people say, let them be there. They, they will go hungry. When they will be hungry, they will go out of the city. And then they will go out of the city, we will go on them. Beloved, the devil will always pressurize you for you to go hungry. For you to, to have needs. For you to see yourself that I don't have it. He will sometimes create needs which are not needs. Just because he wants you to go out of your protection zone. Out of your integrity. Out of your, your peaceful life. He wants you to go out so that he can hit you. 
Hallelujah. Be careful about hunger, about the need. All the need cannot be, sat cannot be satisfied but all by all means. Never say no, I will satisfy this by all means. No, there are certain means that you cannot use to satisfy your needs because those means are deadly means. God knows how many people he have already compromised. God knows. But today, we have a merciful God who can restore us again. Hallelujah. Have you understand the first enemy, the first uh, visitor that you are having is uh, hunger. You, hunger can come out of the blue, but hunger can also be invited. When he's there, be careful how to satisfy him. Because if you don't dump him, if you don't tame him, he can bring death in your life. He can bring divorce. He can bring many problems. The second visitor, this one is a group of visitors. They are a group. They are a group. This is called the flesh desires. The flesh desires. Hunger is a need. But here I'm speaking about the flesh desires. Let, let me mention them. And then you're going to take two of them. Because I say we're going only to speak about three because of time. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. The Bible says that. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. The act of the flesh are obvious. One, sexual immorality. Two, impurity or debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred. Discord, fit of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, fashion, and envy, drunkenness, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did it before, that those live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, beloved, all the things we have now can come to your life. As visitors, they can come visit you. Who never been visited by jealousy? You feel that? Like, you feel bad when somebody tells you, "Hey, I'm going to get married." You feel like something in your heart. That thing you feel in your heart, you are visited by jealousy already. Somebody tells you, "I've been promoted at work." You say, "Oh, praise God!" But you feel in your heart, you are visited by jealousy. Who never been visited by a uh, fit of rage, anger. But let me not talk about all of them. We will have time in another session to go through all of them. But I, today I thought that I should speak about two of them. The first one is sexual pleasures. And the second one is rage of anger or anger. The first one was hunger. Hunger. This one is anger. Anger, angry, you know, angry, dead. angry, anger. All right now, let's go. Sexual pleasures, sexual pleasure can be natural or can be invited as well because he's a visitor. A visitor can be a guest, you can, you can, you can invite sexual pleasure in your life as a guest, and once he's there. For you to, to, take, to tell him, oh, Papa, time is over, go out, usually is very difficult. But he can also come, announce. Now, listen to this, and listen to me carefully. Beloved, scientifically is proven, at the age of puberty, or after puberty, it is completely normal for a human being to feel the need of sexual, um, to have sexual needs. Or to have sexual attraction. It is not, it's not demonic. It's not demonic for a child who is above, who is uh, already um, in poverty, or all those hormonal things are there, everything is done. It's not, it's not demonic for that person to feel those things. But be careful. When you feel the sexual desires, it shows that uh, you have been visited by these people. They are visiting you. 
Na either visiting you it doesn't mean that uh, every visitor who come in your house whatever the visitor ask you give him. I've received visitors in my house. I visit they, they visit me in unexpected and then they ask me something that I did not have. Then I told them my brother, thank you for visiting us but today I don't have the means to help you. And then he must go back. He cannot be there. No, no, you must, you must, uh, must help me. You must, I, don't, I will not go if you don't help me. Tell him, Papa, you are a visitor. I don't have the means to help you get out. Our problem sometimes, when a visitor has come, when sexual desire comes to us as a visitor, we don't understand that he's a visitor. He does not need to be satisfied at all means. There are means for him to be satisfied. And sometimes, ourselves... We are inviting sexual desires. Yes, I like the way your eyes are open like that. Good. How do we invite them? There are many ways that you are inviting those, those things. But I'm going to tell you. Don't worry. If you read in the Bible, in the book of uh, 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 4. King David, one day, he received the visit of his prophet, Nathan. Nathan told him, King, I have a problem and I want you to help me. He said, There is a man, a rich man, who was having a lot of sheep in his house. And there was a poor man also who had one sheep that was taken care of. And he said, One day, and like it, I would like us to read it. Samuel chapter 12, verse 4. And I'm reading from. The new living translation. The Bible says, one day, this is Nathan who is speaking to the King David. He said, one day, a guest, a guest arrived at the home of the rich man. A guest. I told you a guest is somebody who you invite. And I will show you how that desire be, be, uh, became a guest. God, David invited that desire himself. The Bible says, one day, a guest arrived at the home of the rich man but instead of killing an animal from his own flock or her he took poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for, for his guest so here sexual desire Nathan is telling that it's a guest it's a guest that you invited so it means that this man invited that guest to his life this man David, when everybody else went for fight, he did not go. He was left. And as he was left, he didn't have anything to do. He was just walking around. around. And then as he's roaming around, he looked, he found a woman naked. You see? Instead of going, he did not go. He was left. He was looking around, roaming around, being idle. And then he saw the woman. There. And he was attracted by the woman. And come Committed adultery with that woman. So the pleasure that such desire came to him because he exposed himself to a naked woman. He exposed himself, he invited that desire. I believe if he was looking at the cows and the, and, and the, the, the horses, he wouldn't have that desire. But it's because he laid his eyes on a naked woman. Those desire came. So he invited that guest. And that guest came. So sexual desire is a guest. He can be a guest, a visitor. He's a visitor when it is normal, naturally. It's natural. If it's natural to feel it, it can come. Unexpected, you feel like. It's normal at a certain age. But you can also invite those desires by your own means. And when you invite them by your own means, you must be careful. Now, let's quickly see how can we invite those deadly visitors. Now, remember, there is only one setup where sex is recognized as far as Christianity is concerned. As far as Christianity is concerned, the only setup for sex to be satisfied it is called marriage. Any other thing can come with it is from the pit of hell. It is not acceptable by God. The only one set up where sex is accepted, where you can satisfy the sexual desire 
the only setup it is called marriage many people will say no but uh, understand we are old we are big, you know we have toys we have whatever whatever no the only one set up i'm sorry i'm speaking about things you know sometimes difficult to speak, but i have to speak about that because those are the things that are tormenting many people hallelujah the only setup where sexual need can be satisfied is called marriage as far as christianity is concerned i'm not speaking about about your, your village, whatever. I don't speak about nowadays things. Remember, we are not walking about the nowadays things, we are walking about the word of God. What the word of God says. The only setup. So when that visitor comes to you, if you are not a married man, if you are not a married woman, tell him clearly, Emuna, Akina, whatever you are coming to ask me, I don't have it. Please go out. Oh, Emuna, my husband is not around. I cannot go to Balthazar. Oh, my wife is not around. I cannot go to somebody to help me. There is no way for me to satisfy this because the only setup it is called marriage. That is the only setup. Recognize the Bible. It can come. You can feel it. You can have it. You can feel it your head like you're, you're having smoke going out of your head tell him you are a visitor as far as i'm concerned you're still a visitor this is my house i have to give you the right to get what you come to look for or to not get it and because i'm not married and because my wife is not around and because my husband is not around there is no way i can satisfy you so right now i'm telling you get out of my house i will call you when my house, my husband will be back. I will call you when my wife will be. Hey, I can see the bag is not coming. <laughs> I hope I'm not hurting you. I'm telling you the truth. You feel those things. They come. Those are not things I took somewhere. No, we are all human beings here. We know what they're talking about. It comes. Hallelujah. Now, sometimes... We are ourselves inviting those things. How do we invite them? We invite them when we allow certain kind of talk. I don't understand, brother and sister in the Lord, but they always talk about things that will lead you, that will invite the sexual desires. All talk, oh, you have nice cover. Huh? I wish you, you were mine, but ah, you are not mine. Ah, I just leave it. No, brother, sister, if a brother talk to you like that, please bring that brother to the office. We need indeed prayer. Because there are things you cannot talk about. There are sexual talk you cannot have about. You cannot tell him, oh, what do you, where, where, where is your, what is your erotic area, sister? No, I, I mean, no, no. There are things that uh, it can't be, you can't talk about that. And then, if I tell you now my erotic area, the next thing is what? You want to catch me? You want to corner me and touch there so that I can go and get lost and then fight those things? Beloved, these people are guests. If you invite them, they will come. And when they come, now for you to have the strength to take them out is another thing. The second thing, it is certain jokes. Certain jokes people are doing. You can't. You see the jokes of touching each other, touching each other are dangerous jokes. Don't allow, you are a married woman, you cannot at work allowing people, you don't know, maybe it's Balthazar, you don't know. You cannot just allow people to touch you like that. You are somebody's wife. You are somebody's husband. They cannot just touch you anyhow. You see, what you allow to people is how they will consider you. They always try for the first time. If you try touching with a bum the first time, you tend to him say, this must be your first and your last time. Next time you'll do that, I will slap you and I will a case, a, a case against you. And person, uh, this one is a... There are many things they do to us. It's because we allow them that. Hallelujah. The third thing are certain movies that we are watching. Certain TikTok that we are watching. Certain movies... Remember, the role of a movie is to inspire something in you. 
When you always, there are people, he is a single, but he's always on a romantic movie. I like romantic movie. But then you go to the romantic movie, it goes far to those movies called pornographic. You watch the pornography. Many years ago, I was the head of uh, the youth. And then there was a problem in, uh, between my youth. I called them to talk to them. And then the other youth say, this brother, his hand was under my skirt when I was sleeping. Then I asked him, brother, what's going on? How can you go and put your hand under the skirt of this sister when, he, when he, she's sleeping? He said, hey, I'm sorry. You know, late at night, I was watching those late movies. And then I'm, as I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching, I just realized they entered my door. Those undesirable, those deadly visitors called sexual pleasures or sexual desires. They came into me and I didn't know where else to go and I went on to my cousin, sister. There are many people who have done wrong things because of what they watch in a movie. You watch a movie and especially you, when you are watching the movie, you enter in the movie. You and the movie become one. And whatever is happening to the movie is happening to you. You are expressing every feeling of the movie. You see, a part of people are watching a movie start crying. You can see he's in the movie. So if he cries, he can also feel certain things that the people of the movie are feeling. If he's able to cry, he's able to feel everything. Then when those things, you know, when they come... I told you, when that visitor called sexual desire comes, uh, he will not tell you, I need now. Give me, give me. Then you tell him, hey, Muna, how can I give you? I can't give you. Then you tell you, hey, but there's somebody that opened that door. Hey. Hmm. Praise God. The other thing that brings sexual desire that invite the sexual desire is called alcohol alcohol you know alcohol 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 is dangerous you know i was reading um, an article from the national library of medicine it was uh, published by pubmed in uh, uh, 2018 by brooke uh, and you know friends so the title of the study you know it is uh, Patterns of alcohol consumption and sexual behavior among young adults in nightclub. That was their study. Scientific, those people are pagan. They don't know God, nothing. They were just doing a study. And then I found that study. Now, in that study, they said this. They found that 62.9% of those youth who are indulging in alcohol reported sexual activity after drinking. So every time they drink alcohol, 62.9% of them. So it's almost the two quarter, no, the two third of the people, after drinking alcohol, it leads them to go and indulge in sexual intercourses. Or it brings sexual need, it attracts sexual need in them. So alcohol it is one of the big attractor or the big attractor of the guest called sexual pleasure. Hallelujah. And then they say that uh, among the 62.3%, 29.3% reported that they've been doing unprotected sex. Can you imagine that? So it means that if you take four young people who are taking alcohol, three of them at least, will end up into sexual intercourse. And almost one third of them will do that without being protected. Hence we're having those uh, undesirable pregnancies. Tambali will tell you, no, I got pregnant when I was under alcohol. Now this poor child, a child come from pregnancy under alcohol. Oh my God, fortunately we have Jesus. What will you tell your child? That I, I heard you was under alcohol. Be careful with alcohol. It has the potential to bring those people. You lack taking alcohol. You see, when you take alcohol, it breaks all the protection that you have. Am I making sense to somebody? I'm seeing you, you are so quiet. Is it, a, is it a, should I continue or should I stop there? 
because that quietness I'm afraid because I might be stoned. Yes, alcohol, brothers. We know about alcohol. Personally, I don't have any experience about alcohol because I never drink alcohol since I was small, but I've been seeing what alcohol does in other people's life. People always say, oh, pastor, don't worry, I'm not going to be drunk. You don't know the day you'll be drunk. You don't know. Nobody plans that I'm going to be drunk now. When you, you just stand up and you are drunk. And it's only when you finish. The other lady was telling me, when I opened my eyes, I look at the room. Hey, who am I? I look, hey, who's this guy? Hey, man. Hey, man. Who are you? Then the other one, hey, hey, who are you? So both of them, they don't know how they arrived there, what they've done. And then he's asking, did you touch me? Hey, I don't know. Did you touch me also? We don't know. Then the next thing, pregnancy. What stupidity. That's why the Bible is advising us to go away from alcohol. The last one, long fiancé. You know, when you are brother, sister, they've been for long. You know, they are fiancé for long. Two hearts that love each other attract the bodies. Don't have long fiancé. It will end up there. Hallelujah. Because of time, let's go to the last one. Now, be careful, beloved. Many people are sick today. They got HIV, sexual uh, transmitted disease. Others, they cannot have babies anymore. Abortion has come. You know, they've, others, they've removed their wombs. All this because they invited this guest. And once the guest was there, they was not able to handle this guest. Sexual desire can come. You must handle him well. Because if you don't handle it well, it may cost you your life. It may cost you your, your job. It may cost you a lot of things. Hallelujah. Now, the last one is a rage of anger. It's anger. Anger. Anger is a visitor. It is normal for you sometimes to be angry because uh, it can come. But sometimes we can also bring anger to ourselves. Anger can come. We all wa once been angry one day. It is possible. Jesus was angry one day. He saw in the house of his father, people were doing nonsense there. He took a jambok. He whipped them and took them out of. He was, he was angry. It is normal. But the problem with anger, when anger starts controlling you, there are people when they are angry, they forget about anything. They forget who they are. They forget who, uh, their, their post. They forget their position. Then they can say anything. They can do anything. Be careful. Anger when it comes, it will not going to remain there forever. When it will leave you, you'll be surprised. The bad word you have said to people that you cannot take back. The problem with anger, when it comes to you, is like drug, it's like alcohol. When it comes to you, he will lead you to say things. He will lead you to do things. And when you do things under anger, most of them, we will, we will uh, regret them. 90% of things or decisions we're taking under anger are wrong decisions. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Leviticus, Chapter 19, verse 17 and verse 18. The Bible says, Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relative, relatives. Confront people directly so you will not be held guilty for their sin. 18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite. What is happening is, when somebody does something that displeases you, you get angry. Now listen to this. Anger that is not expressed or anger that is uh, shut inside become a grudge. Anger that is not expressed. Anger that is kept inside become a grudge. There are people here, many people here, you are angry at somebody, but you don't do anything because that person is more powerful than you. And you keep it as a grudge in your heart. You are so angry at your husband. You can't do anything to your husband. You keep it as a grudge. And uh, a grudge, the Bible says, Jesus said that, uh, Mark chapter 6, 
verse 19. This woman, he was keeping a grudge in her heart, Herodias, against the man of God. When opportunity was given to her, she sent for the man of God's head to be cut off. You see, when you are angry and you don't pass it, you don't let it go, you keep it in you, it will bring death. Anger always bring, brings death. Hallelujah. The Bible says when you are angry, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, 27. Okay, say, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Control you. Ephesians 4, 26, 27. And don't sin by letting anger control you. I'm reading New Living Translation. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives foothold to the devil. Anger gives what? Foothold to the devil. There are people when they get angry, they don't, they don't, they don't let it go. Anger is a visitor. When it comes, control it. Don't allow anger to do what he wants. Sometimes people are angry will break everything in the house. After breaking that, you're not going to need the things you are breaking. There was a woman who was angry at the husband. And then she called the media and did a, a show. She said that my husband, the husband was a very big singer. He said, my husband the, is singing. He has a, a lot of um, um, progress singing because he, he, he is touching the juju. He is touching witchcraft. He told everybody. Everybody was like, oh. Now she was not, she forgot that the, the money the husband is making, that is the money is maintaining her. Now, as she was angry, she said to everybody else that the husband is singing under juju. All the people, they don't want to buy the music of the husband anymore. They don't want to invite the husband to sing anymore. Now she comes back and does another. He said, no, sorry, I was angry. It was just anger, but my husband doesn't do juju. Ah, people are like, ah, ah, ah. How come? You see, sometimes when you are angry, the decision that you are taking is going to be difficult for you to reverse them. Anger, when it comes, all he wants, he wants you, you to destroy. He wants you to do whatever. Have the anger like the anger of God. The Bible says that the anger of God lasts just a few minutes, but his goodness lasts forever. How come you, your anger lasts forever? The Bible says in the book of Habakkuk, the Bible says that uh, Habakkuk 3.2, the Bible says, in your anger, you remember your mercy. In your anger, you remember your mercy. In the anger of God, you remember his mercy. When you, you are angry. When you are angry. When you are angry. It's terrible. Even in church, when you get angry, it's terrible. Anger is a visitor. He's a deadly visitor. He has killed many people. Many people because of anger, they are in prison. Many people because of anger, they killed other people. Many people because of anger, they did stupid things. They are in trouble today. This is a deadly visitor. When it comes to you, because you cannot, you cannot say that I'm going to be angry now. No. Anger can come to you because somebody does something that does not please you. You are angry. But control that anger. The Bible says, night, you should not sleep with your anger. You must go and fix the problem. There are married people, I'm finishing, who are sleeping in the same bed, but they are angry to each other until the following day. How do you manage to do that? How do you pray now? Those are deadly visitors. You see, when you are angry and you sleep like this, you open the door to the devil. That's why spiritual husband will come to you. Spiritual wife will come to you. That's why sickness, problems, everything will come to you. Because now you open the door. Anger is a great door to the devil. The Bible says, do not give a footstool to the devil. Tell your husband, stop being angry like that. Tell your wife, stop being angry like that. Their wife, when they're angry, even the pastor shall hear. No. Control your anger. Let me stop there because of time. Deadly visitors. Have you ever been visited by one of these? Did you handle them well? Or they are the one who didn't handle you? And now you are 
dead or you have damages you have wound you have scar of your passage the good thing god can heal you again rise up on your feet mm -hmm.